Hi, and welcome back to our Reaper tutorial series. This is tutorial 1E. Hello Reaper, still. And we're going to talk about navigation with the mouse, the trackpad, and how the wheel behaves on the mouse with the modifier keys. Um, so, we are going to have a look back on the session on which we already were. And one important thing to know is how to zoom in. Um, we have a, a trackpad here on my computer, so I'm going to show it with a trackpad. If you want to follow the exact movements, you can have a look here in the system preferences of your Mac. If you go there and have a look on the trackpad, you can see how these things are sort of working. They work pretty similar, just try it out. Okay, back to Reaper. Um, one thing we would like to know is how to zoom in the, to the timeline. Well, that's really easy. With a trackpad, you put two fingers on the trackpad and you pull it down. Then you get a zoom in. As you notice, also the grid is changing because the grid gets finer until the point that we are reaching frame. Uh, we are reaching a frame grid. As you can see on, on the top here, there is the timeline and we split the timeline up into two parts for you. One is giving the hours, minutes, seconds and frames. And this number below here is are the absolute frames. So that's zooming in the timeline. With a mouse it is very similar, only you're using the scroll wheel for that, which gives you basically the same effect. Then we can scroll the whole timeline, or we can scroll the timeline left and right. We can do that with the trackpad, just with two fingers to the left or to the right. Or if we have a mouse, we have the scroll wheel and we press shift to it and scroll. That will move the timeline from the left to the right, and vice versa. The third thing we are going to look at is the track height. Um, this can be done by putting your cursor on the bottom of a track and make it bigger, and just draw it like that. But that is only for a single track. If you want to uh, do all the tracks at the same time, you need to press command and draw it like with on the trackpad with two fingers down or two fingers up to make it smaller again. So that's also very easy. It's just one modifier and the same action. Uh, the third is if you want to select a certain area of your screen, in the edit window, if you want to have a certain amount of clips selected, you can uh, put on the trackpad three fingers, click with one, and then drag the area to what you want to choose. And you see it's chosen. Now, if I un I just need to click somewhere in the edit window to get rid of the selection. And you can see that if I do the same with three fingers, click, click select this area, it only selects this item and not that item. You need to take care that you don't have a little bit of the other item selected, because that will select the whole item as well. This behavior is uh, different in some programs that I've known, but in Reaper it works like this. 
with the mouse um, it actually works the same only you have to use a right click and drag and that will select the whole area in the same way uh, if we want to move an item that's also very easy just click on it and drag it keep clicked and like this we can just put an item anywhere we want we can also drag an item down and immediately create a new track that's also possible the track remains if you drag it up again and then there is a very handy little feature if you click and drag you can copy an item and you can copy this item as well now there are two things selected so I'm copying two things and if I zoom out a little bit and select this whole shebang then I can basically copy everything so that's all very easy sometimes when we have recorded a little bit uh, on a low level it's hard to see the waveforms but also for that there's a trick you can zoom in in the item if you press shift and arrow up it will make the audio bigger and arrow down will return it to its original size that's very handy if you have to do, have to do some very precise editing you can basically zoom out until you have the waveform and compare it to the points where you want to sync it up so I'll restore it to the original size and I'll zoom out again and then there is also the possibility in the item if I select the item here if I think oh I want to keep the place of the item but um, I want to move the audio in the item to be a, a little bit earlier or later press option and drag the audio inside the item as you can see here at the beginning in this area you can see these little two arrows and the, they mean that this is the start of the file so if I move it back then the file is actually looped and what is what was here at the end is now put back into the beginning this can or cannot be handy sometimes and another handy item is the making of markers so let's say we will put our video file at 100.00 so beginning will be at one hour we can put the cursor there and press M and if we press M we get a marker uh, Jeroen, yes? is that a standard to uh, have the video at one hour? Uh, well we keep it as a standard because um, we don't start at zero because if you need to a little bit of time before zero it would actually mean you go back to 23 hours 59 minutes and 59 or how many seconds you need which is uh, used to be a problem so it's a bit historical it's probably now not so much of a problem anymore but it used to be a problem so uh, we always start at one hour and we start the session at 59 minutes because usually if you make a movie 
uh, you start with the whole animatic or the video you want to use and uh, there has to be a leader in front of it which will take some time maybe some titles uh, a little short introduction you never know so we make it we give it one minute extra before not to come into trouble so this was one way of making going back to the marker where uh, where i was telling something about there is an instruction with shift m and this adds a marker too and you can actually name this so you can give it a name called video start uh, already here I have a second marker and uh, this is the start of the more audio so I'll make another marker here there is text oh and then I found out that here uh, I needed to make a marker as well because there is the text too and oh then here there needs to be a marker you can already see that it's getting a little bit of um, it's not really numerical anymore because there is a trick to jump to markers you can for the first nine markers that is you can just press number one and you jump to the first marker then you jump to the next marker which is two then you can jump to number three uh, number four or number five and sometimes it is not very practical because things get a little bit too mixed up for that then we can open the marker window which is here and we put that in the dock uh, to have it available here and if you right click on the markers here you can renumber the markers in the timeline order so I'll just do that and then you can see if I press one two three four five it will be in chronological order so That's I could uh, sometimes very handy I could use my first nine markers to to highlight the most important uh, parts of the animatic exactly like scene one through yeah. scene nine or whatever yeah that's yeah. quite handy because yeah. you get really fast uh, navigating in the session mm -hmm. and of course to jump from one marker to another like you can also use this you can go to one you can go to three or you can go to five on a german keyboard there is um, uh, the possibility to uh, have a shortcut for that there is actually already a shortcut for that which is the trema which is uh, the same the sign below the exclamation mark if you just push that you get uh, to the next marker and if you press option trema then you will get back again so that's an easy way to jump from one part to another there's one little thing to discuss uh, in Reaper we have seen before that if we right click on the track um, then we get a context menu and in Reaper basically anywhere any window has a context menu so that's very quick access you don't need to first go to the menu bar and choose your item there uh, you can just click anywhere it goes into the track control panel over here but also in the edit window in the edit window you get a lot of options where you can uh, set the selection to items and you can insert a marker or you can uh, split items at the cursor which we come to later uh, you can change the way the timeline looks if you are working in music you might want to consider working with measures and beats 
But as we are working in film mostly here, uh, we uh, put it standard on hours, minutes, seconds and frames and the secondary time unit into absolute frames. And the whole concept of uh, Reaper is that you can find what you need very quickly. So if you need to find something about this item, which I just selected here, then I can right click on it and I get a whole uh, menu of options to use on that. If I click in the timeline here, if I would click in the edit window in the timeline, I get another context menu, then I can find what is actually important for this particular window. So I can split items. If I'm on the item itself, I would like to maybe um, process it, to copy it. It can be also be done like this. Thanks very much. We are coming back to you with our next tutorial 1F, Hello Reaper, where we will go into basic editing. Have a nice day.